Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Roy Wood Jr. 2020 was a huge year for streaming, which is kind of like saying 1903 was a huge year for airplanes. There were no real airplanes before then, but this year, oh, all the streaming sites came out left and right. Like most of y'all, I've been coping with the pandemic, just streaming my ass off in my house, hiding from that Rona. I've been streaming on my phone, streaming on my tablet, streaming on my TV. I even been streaming on my Peloton bike. Technically, it's not a Peloton bike. It's an iPad that I take to the handlebars of a bike I stole. Same difference. Anyway, now there's plenty of stuff to watch and plenty of places to watch it. First, let's start with the classics. Netflix, the OG of the game. Netflix been in it since DVDs. Y'all remember old school Netflix, they would send a DVD to your house and you'd go get it and you'd open up the mailbox and you'd go, oh boy, I got me a DVD. Mama, fire up the PlayStation 2. It's time to watch Memento. HBO, yo man, you gotta give it up to HBO. HBO and HBO Max, quality shows. You got black women figuring out their lives. You got white women figuring out how to kill their husband. Wait, was it the husband they tried to kill? Or was it the setting up the husband for the, uh, look, bottom line, if Nicole Kidman looking at your ass without smiling, you in some trouble. But this year, we also had a ton of new streaming services, which if I'm gonna be honest, I'm a little suspicious of all these companies dropping during the same year we had a pandemic. You telling me y'all ain't had nothing to do with Corona coming out? Hmm. It's like they were all sitting around their board meetings like, okay, as soon as March hits, hit the 5G button and start the corona. So we had new streaming services like Quibi. Quibi, which promised to revolutionize the game. Quibi, which stood for Quick Bites, and it was quick, and it bit the dust. A moment of silence. And of course, there's CBS All Access, where you can watch Star Trek with a black woman in charge, and if that's too much for you to handle, we've got an animated version. And it's more popular too. And then there's Apple Plus. This is one of my favorite new streaming sites because if you don't like the show on Apple Plus, you can just go to the Apple Store, complain at the Genius Bar. Uh, yes, I got this show from Apple Plus. It's Steve Carell, but he's sad. And that's not how I like my Steve Carell. Can you get him back to Anchorman status? Also, my iPod Shuffle broke. But all in all, all of these streaming services gave us amazing content to watch this year. Remember when Tiger King came out? Oh, people lost their damn mind. This is how crazy people were. We were only a month into quarantine when Tiger King dropped and everybody was like, yes, yes, meth heads doing animal abuse. Give me more. What's that? It bit off her arm. Oh yeah, give me more. What's that? She's gonna be on Dancing with the Stars after maybe killing her husband. Oh, give me more. Another hit show from 2020 was The Queen's Gambit. Well, I'm gonna be honest though. Queen's Gambit didn't really do it for me. I'm supposed to be impressed because this lady beat all these professional chess players. All right, that's cool, but she ain't play that black dude in the park in New York. You gotta beat him if you the real Queen Gambit. Gambit Queen? Is that what it's called? You know what I'm talking about. That black dude that's set up in Washington Square Park with a chessboard by himself? Lonely. Because nobody will play him. Because people scared. Another huge show from 2020. The Last Dance. Oh my God. Finally a documentary to prove how good Michael Jordan is at basketball. It also showed us that Michael Jordan is the Michael Jordan of laughing on an iPad. He's the Scottie Pippen of wearing oversized suits and the Bill Winnington of hiding his liquor on camera. I guess when you got six rings, you really ain't got to hide shit. Somebody told me the Great British Baking Show was good. I tried to watch an episode, but it was just people baking. Nobody was cussing, nobody was fighting, nobody was backstabbing. They was just being polite to each other and baking bread. That's not a reality show, that's my grandma house. Disney Plus had Hamilton, so I started watching Hamilton, but then I was watching Hamilton on TV, and I didn't get the real full live experience like I would on Broadway, so I just threw $900 out the window when the movie ended so I could know what it felt like. Streaming's a double-edged sword for Hollywood, though. We're getting so used to watching good content in our homes. Will we really be ready to go back to theaters when the pandemic's over? I mean, I get to watch blockbusters like Tenet and Wonder Woman in my house the same day they come out. I can take my apartment and make it just like a movie theater. I can pop some popcorn. I can sit close to the screen. I can have a kid sitting behind me that won't stop talking and spill soda all over your carpet, ensuring that you don't get your security deposit back. And that's the year in streaming. And please, for the love of God, stop saying I look like the dude from the movie Soul. It's not me. It's disrespectful and it's hurtful to my family. Music. It's like podcasts, but with beats. And in the year 2020, when the world was ravaged by a deadly virus, music was a place of comfort. But that doesn't mean music wasn't affected. Tours were canceled. 
bass players were forced to wash their hands for the first time. Even music's biggest award shows were forced to have virtual performances. Band members had to play six feet apart. Lady Gaga was forced to perform as the character Dot from A Bug's Life. We stand Dot, gay icon. But coronavirus wasn't the only thing tearing America apart in 2020. America had a real racial reckoning, and music artists used their platform to call for change and post little black squares on Instagram. But one band in particular got ultra woke. Recently, country band Lady Antebellum changing its name to Lady A. But now in a legal dispute with a black soul artist, Anita White. I have built this name for decades, before they were born. And I've been building it, and I'm an independent artist. We grind every day to do what we do. And black folks, indigenous people of color of this land, we grind even harder. Wow, okay, that is so messed up. First of all, black people didn't hear about you until you tried stealing that black lady's name. Second of all, if you're going to actually change your name, change your name. Don't just abbreviate the problematic part. Like for example, my name used to be Tim Plantation, but I changed the bad word and now it's Jabuki Plantation. But many musicians did properly honor the struggle against police brutality. Artists marched in the streets with Black Lives Matter or hosted benefit concerts to raise money. But if you ask me, the thing that was the greatest support for Black Lives this year was this. This record is in honor of George Floyd. And I really hope we can see more unity and more peace. So. Shout out to his family. I agree. Of course you can't talk about 2020 without referencing the smash hit WAP by Cardi B featuring Megan Thee Stallion. Now, I can't get the rights to play that song because I'm basic cable, but I was able to get into a studio and record a version of my own that gets the vibe across. There's a crow in this blouse, there's a crow in this blouse, you're messing with a wet ass pussy. Mm, I love that song. I, never, I mean never, have I ever been so excited to see how Kids Bop covers a song. Oh, so much has happened. Wait, okay, what else, what else, what else, what else? Beyonce. <laughs> Beyonce released a visual album. There was also a music star baby boom, which means that we're like 20 years out for some really good music. And Taylor Swift went folk. Taylor Swift's breaking records with her surprise new album, Folklore. The pop star selling over 1.3 million albums in just 24 hours. Yes, Taylor Swift went folk, which is not as crazy as people are making it out to be. She started out as a country singer. Folk singers are just country singers that wear vintage clothing. Now what would have been crazy is if Taylor ran as Kanye's VP. Either way, Folklore was one of the biggest albums of 2020 and its lead single, Cardigan, was streamed over 7 million times on its day of release. Let's take a listen. Baby, I've got a wet ass pussy. Get me a cardigan for this wet ass pussy. Also couldn't afford the rise of that, but it is a classic. But musicians this year didn't just give us comfort in times of need. Some of them literally helped save lives. People on social media noticed that Dolly Parton was listed as one of the sponsors of Moderna's new coronavirus vaccine in a preliminary report. Parton announced in April, you may remember, that she was giving a million dollars to Vanderbilt University in Nashville for COVID research. Well, some of that money went to an early stage trial of the Moderna vaccine. Yes, Dolly Parton invented the coronavirus vaccine, which is a crazy plot twist. That would be like if Dr. Fauci dropped the album and it slapped. You know what, to be honest though, I would trust a Dolly Parton vaccine over a Dr. Fauci vaccine because Dolly Parton has been a gay icon for decades. Fauci's kind of new on the scene. Until he's someone's inspo for their RuPaul's Drag Race outfit, he has a lot of work to do, okay? So even though 2020 was a dumpster fire of a year, I was so entertained by music. And I'm very excited to see what 2021 has in store. Will Britney finally be free? Will Rihanna release an album or just give us another line of things that we don't really need? Fenty Falafel. And will The Weeknd admit that he is actually just my boss Trevor? I'm excited to find out. Now, to play us out, the woman who helped cure coronavirus, 
Dolly Parton playing her 1974 hit, Jolene. Jolene, Joe, I got a wet ass pussy, wet ass pussy, I got a wet ass pussy. Jolene. 2020 has been a year where people have depended on technology more than ever. I mean, I don't know how I would have made it living through the pandemic in 1918. What were you supposed to do back then while quarantining? Read? Ugh, gross. Listen to a gramophone? Music sucked back then. It was all guys with weird voices singing about how their sweetie loves apples or whatever. The biggest tech product this year by a Mao was Zoom. And if it took a pandemic to get rid of Skype, then I say worth it. Skype was great if your goal was to not have a meeting. And some people complain that Zoom charges you for longer sessions. But you know what? I say thank God. The only thing getting me through a call with my family is knowing that there's a 45 minute escape hatch. I mean, I pay a premium for even shorter sessions. Is there a five minute plan Zoom? Because if so, shut up and take my money. But 2020 didn't just bring a Zoom. It also brought a Zoom terrorism. Zoom, so many of us are using it to stay in touch. But now, some are having major issues as Zoom meetings are getting hijacked in a new trend called Zoom bombing. Zoom bombings range from pranks to pornography. It even happened during a streaming news conference in which pornography popped up on the screen as health authorities and elected officials discussed the pandemic. At first it just seemed like people were checking in and then uh, very quickly it, it devolved into a lot of pornographic images being dumped as screen screenshots. Yeah, of course Zoom meetings got hit with dick pics. Each new form of technology is just another way to send dick pics. I mean, if you look close enough, you can see the dick Neil Armstrong drew on the moon. One small dick for man, one giant dick we all have to see at night. Inspiring. 2020 also left us with more free time than ever to improve ourselves, like learning a new language or baking our own bread. But thankfully, video games were there to save us from all that crap. Nintendo saw a big boost in sales as more people need to be entertained at home because of the pandemic. Animal Crossing, New Horizons, 26 million copies have been sold of this wildly popular game. Yes, 2020 gave us the video game Animal Crossing, which let us create our own perfect little world while the real world was going to shit. Although we all ended up making the same mistakes in Animal Crossing that we did in real life. You style the game free and happy on an unspoiled island, but then three raccoons convince you to become a land developer. One thing leads to another, and let's just say my residents were not happy when I let BP start fracking on my island. But hey, sorry guys, daddy's gotta get those turnips somehow. Whew. So while technology did a lot of great things for 2020, just like everything else this year, it got politicized. We've got breaking news this morning, the Trump administration announcing it will block downloads of Chinese-owned apps TikTok and WeChat starting Sunday. Yeah, President Trump tried to ban TikTok. And you know what? I'm with Trump on this one. It's a horrible app. TikTok is more responsible for convincing white people they can dance than the DJ throwing on Cotton Eye Joe. White people used to be ashamed to dance, and now they all think they're Jabberwockies. But if Trump was smart, he wouldn't ban TikTok, he'd just get on TikTok. It's a perfect showcase for how he dances. Ugh. This makes me want to follow his advice of injecting bleach, but into my eyes. But tech companies got the last laugh in 2020, because while Trump was trying to ban TikTok, Twitter and Facebook were trying to ban Trump's bullshit. Facebook has taken action against what it calls harmful misinformation from President Trump. The company deleted a post by the president that included a false statement about children and the virus. And Twitter hit President Donald Trump with a warning label on one of his tweets about vote by mail, saying the post violated the company's rules around elections. I'm glad I finally get around to fact checking Trump's new lies. But don't expect credit for standing up to the president after five years of this shit. That's like claiming you beat up The Rock when he's 90 years old. That's not winning a fight, it's elder abuse. Okay, I'm just saying, social media companies should have been fact checking Trump earlier. He spread so much damaging false information over the years, from saying Obama is a secret Muslim born in Kenya, to claiming Meryl Streep is overrated. She is the greatest living actress. And I know all about good acting, okay, after my critically acclaimed performance in Crazy Rich Asians. Shut up, Twitter. 
But many people would say the greatest tech news this year is that we have several vaccines in development that actually seem to work. And of course, we all know the people who need to get a vaccine first are the elderly, like my grandma, Ronnie Ada Chang. No, that is not me in a wig, okay? I just take after her. Now give her the vaccine, preferably in the right arm because I'm left-handed. But just in case the vaccines don't work out, there's still the option of hitting the eject button on this whole planet. A giant leap for Elon Musk's SpaceX. The company has launched four astronauts into orbit. Elon Musk says he is highly confident he is going to put people on Mars by 2026. The key to achieving this goal is SpaceX's development of its Starship rocket. The vehicle is being built to launch cargo and as many as 100 people at a time to the moon and Mars. Yes, private citizens without astronaut training will be able to travel to space, which means I can finally add the balls. Armstrong's moon dick. Everyone always forgets the balls. So 2020 was a bullshit year, but at least technology made it a little bearable. And hey, we made it through. It's almost 2021. Things can only get better from here. God damn it. For many people, 2020 was the most challenging year of their lives. It brought out a whole new range of experiences and emotions. People were scared, they were sad. They were scad. That's when you're so sad it scares you. <laughs> but being stuck at home for most of the year had another, even stronger effect on people. They were horny as hell. In March, Pornhub had a historic spike in worldwide traffic. And OnlyFans, a site that allows subscribers to directly message and pay their favorite performers, is getting around 200,000 new users per day. That's right, not everyone was baking bread during the pandemic. Some people were needing their own dough. People were so thirsty for online porn that even your grandma finally memorized the Wi-Fi password. And she can't even remember your name. But you can only watch so many pizzas getting delivered by the pool boy to the stepmom who's also a cheerleader. Some people were so horny in 2020, they crossed a forbidden line. Getting lucky in lockdown? Match.com put out their annual Singles in America survey. Get this, it shows that one in four Americans turned toward their roommate for intimacy and sex during the pandemic. Wow, those people must have been really lonely. Not because they were boning their roommates, but because they were filling out a survey on Match.com. I don't care how desperate I get, I will never stoop that low to sleep with my roommate, even if he is my husband. Thankfully, not everyone hooked up with their roommates this year. Some people were fantasizing about a different resident in their home. The single folks out there haven't been dating because of lockdown restrictions. They've been turning to dating apps, Zoom meetings, all this stuff. But there's about 28% of you guys that have been getting turned on by Alexa. Yeah, like, hey, Alexa, that Alexa. Hey, no judgment. There is nothing wrong with finding voices sexy. My first boyfriend was a speak and spell. Should have known I wasn't his type when I caught him with my Simon. But I don't know, the Alexa thing? I don't really get it. Siri? Definitely. She's got that super hot voice. Oh, sorry, I didn't quite get that. Uh, yeah, she can quite get that anytime she wants. <laughs> I don't know, Alexa always sounds uptight, like she's got sand stuck in her motherboard. I heard that you skank. Between porn use and spanking it to the robot who reorders your toilet paper, people might have spent 2020 stuck at home, but their minds were in the gutter. And you could see the horniness everywhere, even in places where you wouldn't expect it. Like this summer when Martha Stewart dropped one of the hottest thirst traps of all time, or when Chris Evans gave us a peek at his camera roll. At ease, Captain. Permission to come aboard, sir? Captain America was captain of a boat, right? But some people got too horny this year and gave horniness a bad name. An unsettling incident involving CNN's chief legal analyst now off the air for allegedly pleasuring himself on a Zoom video call. Jeffrey Tubin, who's also a staff writer for The New Yorker, was suspended by the magazine for masturbating during the call last week with other New Yorker employees and WNYC radio staff watching. Ew, Jeffrey Tubin. More like Jeffrey Pubin. No, wait, Tubin is better. More like Jeffrey Tubin. Ha, got him. When you're on a work Zoom, that's not time to masturbate. That's time to paint your toenails or get your Christmas shopping done online. You gotta keep it professional. He just had to do it on a work Zoom? 
I can't imagine that he couldn't figure out a better time to squeeze in, squeezing it out. This was the year of extra free time. I learned to play the guitar. I knit sweaters for everyone I know. I did 600 puzzles, one for every time I masturbated, which there was plenty of time to do. But thankfully, the horniest moment of the year was one that we welcomed with open arms. The WAP video, which stands for wet ass pajamas. Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion must have known that horniness was at an all time high because this song had something for horny creatures of all species. Men, women, snakes, tigers, leopards, and big billionaires. More importantly, it was a symbol of female sexual empowerment. Just watching that video is the equivalent of doing 500 Kegels. And we needed that this year. We felt so horny and helpless. And then this song came out and told women that it's okay that you had to change your batteries out of your vibrator twice this year. It's okay that you're taking extra long mommy showers. It's okay that you're starting to find Olaf from Frozen attractive. You found him attractive before the pandemic. Ooh, Alexa, you secret spilling bitch. So that's the year in horniness. 2020 has been a crazy year in so many ways, but horny moments gave us just a little bit of escape. We'll never forget about the way it made us feel in our hearts, in our minds, and in our wet ass vaginas. You received the notification Lady Lube is out of stock. God damn it, Alexa, I will unplug you. During 2020, we were either stuck indoors quarantine or we were outside protesting. There was no in between. In fact, sometimes I couldn't separate the two. I'd be home going, what do I want? Breakfast. When do I want it? Now. It seemed like the year of everyone saying enough is enough and taking it to the streets. Let's start with the biggest movement of them all, Black Lives Matter. In the wake of George Floyd's murder, Americans took to the street to tell cops, hey, what if you stopped killing the people you were supposed to protect? But in response to people asking cops not to beat their asses, a lot of cops started beating asses. They kept hitting me and he eventually hit my hand and broke it. I needed to stay as calm as possible. I had no idea what these guys were capable of. Damn, he didn't even flinch. These cops are so stupid. Not because they're trying to beat up an unarmed man, but if I hit a man that hard with a baton and he just stood there, I wouldn't keep hitting him. I'd be like, shit, this man is a Terminator. Run! But while many Black Lives Matter protesters got their ass beat, some protesters showed us their whole ass. Naked Athena captured the imagination of Americans when she staged a full frontal protest before armed federal agents in Portland. This fury arose in me and I said, I want to be naked. Social media is calling this goofy bitch Naked Athena. If this woman was black, we'd be calling her arrested. The f are you talking about? These 2020 protests ran the full spectrum from Black Lives Matter, where people were fighting for their right to live, to the protest against lockdown and face masks, where people were fighting for their right to die. And we all seen the clips of COVID Karens losing their shit in a Target or Whole Foods for having to wear a mask. But one of my favorite moments proved that not every Karen was a woman. The mask wars rage on. A dad loses it in a store after being told to cover up. The man's son literally picks him up and carries him right out of the store. I'll beat that mask off your face like a pussies. You're a bunch of pussies wearing masks. Your own son carried you out? You can't call someone else a pussy when you're being carried out by the person that came out of your balls. Why are you all so pissed off about masks? Even the naked bitch kept her mask on. And look, I can understand not wanting to cover a beautiful, symmetric face. I mean, look at your girl. <laughs> but there's a deadly global pandemic ravaging the country. Plus, it's impossible to do a beauty routine under a ventilator. So even if I survive, I'd look ashy as f In which case, what was the point? Protests have been such a huge part of 2020 that after the election, Americans started protesting stuff that didn't even happen. So the Trump stands took to the street demanding that they stop the count. Stop the count! Or count all the votes. Count the votes! Or count some of all the votes, then stop the count. You know, it really depended on who you asked, which is not an effective protest. It would be like Black Lives Matter going, stop killing us, except for Deshaun. He ain't shit anyway. 
But by far, my favorite election fraud protester was this dude. The Biden crime family stealing the election. The media is covering up. The Biden crime family stealing this election. The media is covering it up. The Biden crime family stealing this election. The media is covering up. We want our freedom for the world. Okay, that guy needs a chill pill and some sleeves. Because right now, the only results he looks fit to dispute are a wet t-shirt contest. And listen, Freedom Seymour Hoffman, if you want me to believe you while you're interrupting a press conference, I have to be convinced you came to interrupt the press conference. Not that it was a side errand on your way to pick up some chewing tobacco. But it wasn't all bad at the protests in 2020. There was that one Saturday when Trump officially lost. And for once this year, we saw protests inspired by happiness. People took to the streets for something good, and I wasn't ready. I had a brick in one hand and a Molotov cocktail in the other, so I didn't know what to do, so I just made a kiss. And one guy got so excited, he even celebrated in two languages. Mecca is very, very content, very, very joyous. And I've been to France, it's beautiful. And he's not the only one this morning. I love a croissant. I love a croissant. I love an omelette. Du fromage. Come full circle because this feels racist against white people. Almost. French people are way more than just escargot and croissants. They also love baguettes. So yeah, this dude was being mildly racist, but he's got a nice torso and he's happy about Biden winning. So if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna show him my anger with a naked protest of my own.